right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Marketplace Compliance for 2025. My name is Chelsea Smith, the one and only learning and development specialist here at Action Benefits, here to walk you through how to be as compliant as you possibly can in the marketplace for next year. Um, joining me today, I have one of my favorite account managers, uh, Renee. Go ahead, Renee, and uh, give the people what they want. Say hi. Hi, Chelsea. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And our individual team looks forward to working with each of you this uh, AEP OEP uh, season. So we are here to help. So please reach out to us with any of your questions. Thanks. Thank you, Renee. I say she's one of my favorite account managers, but I feel like I say it every time because they're all my favorite. It's hard to pick just one. You know, if you've ever talked to them before, you know what I'm talking about. But we are here today to talk about marketplace compliance. And I'm just going to warn you here up front, there's nothing really new. I'm telling you that from last year, um, when it comes to marketplace compliance, this is just kind of a little refresher. Or if you're maybe new to the um, individual market and need some help making sure that you are consenting and getting all of the paperwork you need uh, to keep compliant in the marketplace, this is the um, webinar for you. So go ahead and throw any questions in the chat you might have. Um, and without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. This is going to be one of the shorter webinars I've given. But, you know, me, if you've seen one of my webinars before, I say that and then I talk forever. So, okay. So by the end of this webinar today, you should be able to do these things. You should be able to compliantly document consent from your marketplace clients. Determine when consent is needed because it's not needed every single time, but you'll see when we get there. Compliantly document review of client information for marketplace clients and determine when in, in information review is needed. Because again, it's not always the case that you're going to need to complete these documentations, but be safe. Make sure you know when you should be putting them in and when you shouldn't be. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about today is the consent documentation form. So agents and brokers similar to the Medicare realm, must get documentation of their client's consent to allow their agent to do things with or for them on their behalf, right? So if you worked in the Medicare um, side of the business, business before, um, you're used to doing something like this, right? That's the scope of appointment. So it's kind of similar to a scope of appointment in a lot of ways. Um, agencies can get consent for a client or for just themselves, it depends on what you're trying to do, right? So you can gather consent for the entire agency, or you can gather consent for an individual, depending on how that consent form is worded. So a couple of things need to happen to make sure that the consent form is indeed documented properly, so it will count to um, consent. So this documentation is only compliant if the client takes an action in order to verify their consent. So again, think scope. I, I feel like I'm going to repeat myself a million times, but think of scope of appointment, right? So you need to have them physically do something in order to say, yes, I consent to this. Whether that be answering a text message you send them, having them sign the paper physically in front of you, e-signing something like DocuSign, answering your email saying, yes, I consent or verbally they can give consent as well, so long as you recorded it. And that's the big caveat. Make sure that if you're going to get um, verbal consent from your client that you are recording that because you're going to recognize some of these rules if you worked in Medicare, these need to be on file for a while as well. So you can't really file away something you heard unless you have a recording of it, right? So again, make sure that your consumer is taking some sort of an action to say that they consent. You can't just send them the consent, consent form without them doing something with that form. Okay. So in order to be compliant, you also must have the following details in that document that are on your screen and I'll read them for you. You must have a description of the scope, purpose, and duration of the consent provided, the date the consent was given, the name of the consumer or representative, the name of the agent or broker, and the process through which consent can be withdrawn. And that's the big one that you're going to keep that one in your back pocket for now. We're going to talk a little bit about that one again later on in our show, 
But for the most part, this is, well, this is all of what you need to have to be compliant in that consent form. The old, and I did say that this is very similar to Medicare, but there is one difference here from Medicare. So in Medicare, we know that um, scopes of appointments only last for a certain amount of time and they have to be rewritten on certain bases, right? But consent in the individual space does not expire unless it's marked, marked otherwise on the form or until your client revokes that consent. So if it were me, I would make it really easy on myself and I would just write until revoked on that form. So that way you don't have to keep re-getting consent every year or every time you speak to them, or you know maybe you just really like signing paperwork, that's your thing, cool, awesome, not me. Um, but if you really want to, you could have them fill out the consent form more often, just as long as it says until revoked on there, then you don't need it to get it need to get that consent a second time unless your client does revoke that consent from you. And there does need to be, like I like it says on there, directions on how to do that. Okay. So just like Medicare, documentation of this consent must be stored for at least 10 years, whether that is digitally on a hard drive, in a filing cabinet, or in a digital platform for yourself, like coverage for one. Diane Wheelock asks, do you have an example of a consent form? You're getting ahead of me. I have one. It's a surprise. Hold on. We're going to get there. I promise. You're ruining the surprise. <laughs> So yes, the documentation must keep be kept for a minimum of 10 years. Um, if you use a digital platform like HealthShirt or Coverage One, make sure that you are um, storing that somewhere. So now that we've talked about the what and the why, let's talk about the when and the how. How, when do you need to do this? And how are you going to go about doing it? Okay, so if you did business in the under 65 market last year, you should have already been doing this. You should have already been gathering consent because this was required starting in June of 2023. So if you haven't been gathering consent from your marketplace clients, now is the time to start. Okay. So if um, an existing client's plan renews automatically and there is no changes to that application, there is no need for documentation. The requirement isn't triggered. Um, unless there's a need for that consent, right? So if you didn't change anything from year to year, you don't need to go contact your client just for the sake of getting this consent form. And that could go on until they needed to have something changed, right? Okay, so I mentioned how the um, revoking consent was going to come into play later, um, and this is that. So speaking of the marketplace, you might be familiar with something called an appendix part C, right? So it's the portion where your client is asked if someone helped them with their application. And this is the part where the client would answer your NPN. It sounds a lot like a consent form, right? The things that they're going to ask you are going to sound a lot like that slide we had a couple back that talked about like the date and, and whether or not you have permission, all that stuff. It's going to ask a lot of very similar questions. So it's going to sound very much like a consent form. And you're going to think, if you weren't listening to me, you're going to think, oh my gosh, I, I have consent built into the marketplace. Well, I don't need to do anything. What is Chelsea talking about? There's two problems with this consent form. Consent form. Um, there is nothing in that form that discusses how that con consent can be revoked. And when you have to gather consent of someone to do something for them, you need to get that consent before you do the thing, right? And appendix part C's come after you've already filled out the application, after you've done most of the steps, right? So this can't count as consent of doing something for your client if you already did the thing for the client, right? So don't get confused by that appendix part C, right? It sounds very much like a consent form, but it is not a consent form. So make sure that you get the consent form before you start doing anything with your client. If you're going to do something for them, make sure you get that consent form before you do anything. Okay, so acceptable document documentation formats include the following. You can get a signed document, including an AOR. Verbal confirmation in an audio recording. That's the big part there, right? We talked about this before, but you can get it 
verbally so long as it is recorded, right? A written response, email, text, something like that. Any other means that fits your business and meet, uh, meets those requirements, right? So, um, you know, a lot of my um, agents say that they're very comfortable with pen and paper. That's awesome. If you wanna use pen and paper, great. Just make sure that it has all the requirements on it and make sure that you have a way to then store that for 10 years so you keep to that compliance doc, that part in case you ever get audited, right? Um, digitally is a great way as well. Um, if I were an agent, I'd probably store mine digitally, but just make sure that you are storing them. Not, I would put them on a, um, backup hard drive. So that way they would stay with me in case, you know, my, my laptop goes, goes screwy or, you know, my power surges, anything like that, you would have those safe for 10 years. Um, and then, like I said before, recording, if you want to record your voice, just again, make sure you have a place to store that for 10 years in a safe place in case you get audited. You can't just say, oh yeah, I talked to my buddy. He's super cool with me doing this for him. Well, that's great for you, but that doesn't, that doesn't keep, that doesn't keep um, the marketplace off your back through your consent. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, so yes. CMS makes, has some model forms available, and so there are some forms already loaded into Coverage for One and into DocuSign. So I do have a sample one right here. Um, this is the one that is loaded into Coverage for One. It's just, it doesn't have the Coverage for One logo on it. Um, I also can make you one that's branded to your agency or to yourself if you would so choose to do that. Just drop me a line, and I'm more than happy to do that for you. Um, I've done it before. This one is one on the screen it is a digital version that the person can click on and type on. And I think that's really helpful for, it's like the best of both worlds, I think, if you're someone who wants to do them either digitally or um, with ink, right, on a piece of paper, because you can print this PDF off as well and have the person sign if they so choose. If you're, this is for the marketplace, yep. So this, these consent forms, um, this is only for doing marketplace business. Yep, this is not trickle over uh, to other forms of business. Thank you for the question. Yep. All right, um, Renee, unless I've missed anything, if there's anything you need to like to add? No. Um you're doing great, Chelsea, and I think um, just the agents need to remember to keep um, everything, like their records, keep everything in a file, you know, make sure they know where things are at, and then kind of just to do their homework ahead of time so that they're prepared to know what documentation, what's needed before they uh, get started so that to make sure that they're in compliance. Right. Um, if you use coverage for one, this is, like I said, it's already uploaded in there. Um, it's right at the top. So you can just use, um, click on that and it'll download. Or if you're a paper kind of guy, gal, um, just have them a bunch of them printed off, stored away somewhere. So you can just pull them right out, just make that part of your routine. Um, so that that way you always are knowing that you're safe. You'd rather be safe than sorry. I'm not gonna tell you to get, uh, get consent every single time, that would be a nightmare. But um, if you, um, any, basically, anytime you're doing an action for your clients, no pun intended, <laughs> anytime you're doing something for them or with them, you're going to want to get their consent. Yeah, yep, absolutely. I can email this form to you. Yep. Um, when, okay, um, I'm, asked, I'm being asked, sorry, for those of you not looking at the chat, I'm being asked if I can send them this form. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you get an email. If you register for any of our events, you get an email about 24 hours after as a recording. I can include that um, form of this form in the recording email as well. So just look out for that email in about 24-ish hours pending. I can get the video up in that time, which I've only missed one. So um, keep an eye out for that. All right, so pop quiz. I'm going to ask you some situations, or I guess I'm going to tell you some situations. I'm not going to ask them. I'm going to tell you about some situations and ask you if you need to document consent or not. 
and go ahead and put in the chat just just because this is an easy one yes or no just go ahead and throw it in the chat for me whether or not you need consent in these situations remember if you're nervous you're not completely sure that's okay um on that chat you can just select to give the answer just to me just to renee or to renee and i both so that you don't have to put your answer in front of everybody i understand so first one your client's plan has renewed automatically with no changes to their marketplace application do you need to document consent in this situation Awesome, I love that. Yes, flood of correct answers. No, you only need to collect consent if you are actively doing something for the client. Auto enrollment needs means no need for a consent form. You can just keep on keeping on the way that you were. Number two, you've recently become the AOR for a client with an existing marketplace application. Do you need to document consent before you assist this customer? You can probably guess the answer from the way that I worded this one. Oh, I thought I was gonna trick you guys. The answer is yes. You're gonna do something for them, right? Assist, you're going to assist them. So you need to have documentation ready so that you have something saying that yes, this person said it was a-okay to do this for them. A consumer previously granted consent to your entire agency to assist on the marketplace. The NPN on their application is now changing to your NPN. Woo! Do you need to document consent before you assist this customer? This one's a tricky one. See, I, I tricked you guys. I tricked everyone on this one. No, you do not need to get consent in this situation. You don't only because the consent was given to the entire agency, right? Entire agency. So you can write a consent form to an entire agency so long as that's what is on the original consent form is to the agency. So as long as you're still functioning under that agency and the person that you're getting this um, for, uh application from worked in that same agency and the NPN changes to yours, you're good. That was given to the entire agency that consent, not just to that individual agent. Now, if your agency does not do that, different story, right? But for this intent and purpose, the entire agency was given um, consent. So the agent that is NPN is getting changed to is all good. So if you are working in a big agency, it's probably, that might be a good idea to get one like that. That way you just hit one. Okay, a consumer fills out the marketplace application on their own with absolutely and utterly no assistance from you. Do you need to document consent? All right, I'm getting a lot of no's and that is correct. Yes, if you're not, if you, even if you're going to be the AOR for this person, if you didn't do anything with them or for them, you do not need to document their consent. Okay, so if you didn't do anything with, a, with them, you're good. A consumer was referred to you via help on demand. Do you need to document consent? You guys are so fast. It's fun to watch, actually. The chat just. All right. Yes, you guys are right. Yep. So a referral only indicates interest in health insurance, right? Not that they have selected you, right? So to be chosen by this person and gain their consent to do something for them, you got to have them sign that consent form. So yes, 
you do need to gain consent in this scenario. All right, and then last one in this quiz before we move on to the other half of our show. So without your assistance, a consumer enrolls via an agent broker link on an enhanced direct enrollment pathway like Health Sherpa. Do you need to document consent here? The answer to the previous question might help you here. I'm tricking you guys again. No, you do not. You do not need to get um, consent here because you did not assist them in doing anything. Yes, you're still becoming their agent, their AOR, right, in this situation, but you did not, you didn't do anything for them. You didn't assist them in anything. So because you did not do it, actively do anything for them, um, it doesn't matter that your NPN is going to get attached. You didn't do anything actively for them so that you didn't handle their information, right? So there's no need for you to get their your consent or their consent to handle their information. Um, overall, most 90% of the time when thinking about this, just think about, did you do something for them? Are you handling their information? And if the answer is yes, get documentation, get consent. If you are not, you probably don't need it. If you're ever unsure, I, always, I personally would always err on the side of getting it. But in this situation, since you did not do anything for them, did not assist them, no need to document that consent. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water really quick before we do the review documentation portion. Um, Renee, is there anything I missed or anything you'd like to add? No, just everyone did a great job on the pop quiz. And um, if you, again, we're, our team is here to help. So if you have any additional questions after our webinar, reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help and answer your questions. Or if you'd like to get a customized copy of that document, uh, reach out to us and we can help you with that. Yes, um, I can make custom versions of that document as well. If you'd like your agency's things on it, love doing it for you. So let me know, no problem or let your account managers know. All right, so the second half of our show is about review documentation. So agents and brokers must document that the consumer or representative has reviewed the eligibility application information and that it is correct to their full extent and understanding and all that good stuff. So this is basically just saying that the information on the um, application is correct to the best of the knowledge of the person, right? So just like, you're going to hear me rinse and repeating a lot of this stuff. This is a lot of it is very similar. A lot of the um, requirements, right? So the consumer or their authorized representative, just like in the consent form, must take action to produce that documentation. So same thing, answering a text, answering an email, signing a form, giving verbal consent and you recording it, um, signing on a piece of paper, something like that. They have to do something. You can't just send it to them. So this list is going to seem very, very familiar, but this is, these are the requirements as well for reviewing documentation to be compliant. The date the information was reviewed, the name of the consumer or the representative, an explanation of the attestations at the end of the application, and the name of the assisting agent or broker. So very similar. And just like in the Medicare space and just like in the with the consent form we talked about earlier, you must keep this on file for 10 years minimum, just like before. Okay, but how are we doing this? Oh, do I have a sample? You bet I do. You bet I do. You guys are jumping ahead of me, but yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'll show you that one too. So um, how are we doing this and when? So, just like with the consent document, I'm repeating myself again, um, this was being, uh, this was effective June, 2023. So if you did marketplace business before, you should have been getting this uh, document, review documentation before. 
um, and you're getting it every time that you have an uh, application that you do something with. So basically, whenever you're giving the consent form, you should give this too. But we'll talk about whether or not you should give them at the same time or not in a second. So again, rinse and repeat. I don't want to make you sit through me saying the same things over and over, but um, the requirements are basically the same um, of how this can be documented. Um, if you're going to do it verbally, again, make sure that it's recorded somewhere. And if you are doing it digitally, make sure you're housing it in a place that can't get stolen or, you know, water dumped on it and your computer goes on the fritz, you know, make sure that you're putting it in a safe space. So for these review documentation forms, CMS doesn't make a model one, unlike the consent forms. But there are forms already loaded into coverage for one um, and DocuSign. So if you need one, da, 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 this is a sample one. Um, you might have seen this before. Again, these are available in coverage for one and I can for someone asks, yes, absolutely. I will put one in the email that you will get in about 24 hours with the recording of this webinar. And then if you want one that is branded for your agency, of course, I am willing to do that for you. Just let me know. Um, and like I said before, I like these ones because they function both as a PDF that you can print out and have someone physically sign with a pen, or you could have email it to them. They can click on the blue and they, they can type in that blue area, and that is their action that they are giving the review documentation application. Okay. Whoop. All right. Another pop quiz. So we are close to already close to the end of our show today. Um, not completely done. So here is your pop quiz to see when you should be giving this. So this is for any time, like I said before, any time that you are looking at this person's information and you need to have um, documentation that this person knows that this information is correct. So uh, your first question, your first situation, I should say, a consumer gets your help to update their estimated Magi on their marketplace application. Do you need to document that the consumer has reviewed this information and that it is accurate? Everyone's getting it right. Yes, absolutely. Any change to the application triggers the need to document the review. Application filers are able to review that information for those they can legally represent. Um, but if it is getting changed and if, um, if it's going to affect the application, then definitely make sure that you get consent that that information is correct. And believe it or not, this is already the last question. Um, can you use the same form to document both consent and review? Can you use the same form for both consent and review? If you think about the process here and the things that you are capturing, can you use the same form? This is kind of tricky. My answer to you here on this one is a yes, but, okay? So yes, you can use the same form to document both the consent and the review, but you have to be very careful about how you're gonna present that form to your client, right? Because you have to gather consent from them to do an action on their behalf before you get any of this information in the first place that you would have to document um, review for, right? So can it physically be on the same piece of paper or in the same form or in the same um, thing, physical piece of paper? Yes, but you're going to have to find a way to separate 
um, that the review of that information happened after that application was put in, right? Or after you ga gained that information from that person. You can't check and have them verify that information is correct if the information's not there, right? And the other way around, you cannot document consent for something after you've already done it, right? So it can be in the same form, but there has to be two separate spots for that per person to be able to consent and document review, right? Yes, I am allowing you to help me. Yes, I know this information I just gave you is correct. And I did not give you that information without you, me saying it was okay to you first, right? So yes, they can be on the same form, but depending, you know, depending on, it might be difficult to do like a text message like that. It might have to be two separate texts, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it's on a piece of paper. You can have them sign it, go over stuff, sign it again later. Okay. So like I said, a lot, this, none of this is new. This was all put into play last year. So if you did this all last year and this all sounds familiar to you, then awesome. You were doing it right last year and you have no issues. If you are new to the marketplace, this is your first time. Um, lean on your Medicare knowledge because a lot of this is very similar. It just, it's a little less rigorous than the scope of appointment, but kind of similar, right? So this is the quickest one I've ever done. Like, it's like we're all set, guys. This, that's all I had for you. Unless you have questions about anything, um, um, throw any questions in the chat. Renee, is there anything that I missed? No, um, just again, reach out to our team if you have um, uh, any additional questions, the email is right there on the screen. And also, I know Chelsea and Randy added some uh, terrific upcoming uh, webinars uh, to the, our training calendar at actionbenefits.com. If you take a look at that, there's some fantastic webinars coming up. So if you uh, are in need of anything, any questions you might have, reach out to our team. We're happy to help. And we look forward to working with you this AEP OEP. So that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today.